Hey, how's it going, guys? Let's get to our first word for chapter 14 on American civilizations. And that word is Cahokia. So Cahokia is an ancient American Indian civilization in our era from 6,000 to 1450, reached its peak around 1,000 AD. It was a very strong trade center and had lots of trade along the Mississippi and trade that went down all the way to the southeast United States and potentially they believe all the way into Mexico that there were trade links as well. So this is a very advanced civilization in the Americas. I had huge mounds where the religious leaders lived and where the people around here lived as well. Lake Texcoco. Lake Texcoco is where the Aztecs really built their strong civilization. So basically, in the, there's an island on the lake where the Aztecs started building their city of Lake Texcoco. And they had causeways connecting all these islands. They used chinapas for farming on there. And it was really hard for other people to invade and attack them when they were on this island in the middle of the city, middle of the lake, and they had access to fresh water as well. And that is Lake Texcoco. Well, let's talk about those chinapas and what exactly chinapas were. So chinapas were pretty much, they were like these man-made farming mechanisms that the Aztecs used. So basically what they would do is they would take wooden posts and put them all the way into the ground, and then they would put a wooden platform on here, and they would bring in soil, and then they would grow crops on top of it so they could expand their farmland. This would be the original island that the Aztecs built their civilization on. The Chinapas were these man-made islands for farming that were put all the way around here and allowed them to have like two farming basically seasons in a year so they could pr produce more food and feed their population which became stronger and stronger and became one of the most powerful civilizations in the Americas made with Chinapas. Cusco was the capital of the Inca Empire and it was built in the mountains. It was a joint capital with another city called Cajamarca, but Cusco was the main capital. You see it here today. It is a mountain city. It is located very near the modern tourist destination of Machu Picchu right there. Pretty cool place. Um, but Cusco was a, the major city and capital of the Inca Empire. Carpa Non. Carpa Non is the name of the Inca roadway system that they built that had over 25,000 miles of roads all the way through the Andes Mountains that we could see these roads. And many of these still exist, and believe it or not, people still go hiking on these road systems that exist in the Andes to this day. And that is Carpa Non. Quetzalcoatl was a feather serpent, a uh, flying reptile god that was like a dragon. That is supposed to be, as we can see up here, the creator of all mankind. Believed in by many different Mesoamerican religions, like the Aztecs, the Mayans, amongst others. Chichen Itza was one of the largest Mayan cities located in Mesoamerica. It's found in southern Mexico today. Uh, like many of the Mayan cities, it had an astronomy center. Um, it was very advanced for its time. The ball game took place there. Just remember that Chichen Itza was a major city that the Mayans had. Human sacrifice is something that happened in Mesoamerica. Human sacrifices when people's lives were given up, and the belief was in many of these religions, um, such as the Aztecs, was the belief that it was the blood of the people who were sacrificed would allow the gods to keep living and live better, and that it was seen as being necessary. One of the big drawbacks of this was many times the people who were sacrificed were from outside of the group, so they were like outside of the Aztecs. And what will happen is when uh, Columbus and the Spanish come in, for example, they're able to get the groups outside of the Aztecs to fight against the Aztecs because many of them are angry at the Aztecs because as the Aztecs have been conquering and taking over people, they've been taking those native people from the Americas and sacrificing them. So this is human sacrifice. Quechua is a language and a people. Many people will say Inca people, but the actual name of the people are the Quechua. Inca actually means king. And so the people would call themselves Quechua. They would be Quechua people, and that their language would be Quechua. This is an indigenous language, an indigenous people 
who still live in many areas in the Andes, in Peru, in Bolivia, in Ecuador as well. Royal ancestor veneration. In the Inca Empire, ancestors were venerated or had an extreme amount of respect, almost to the point of worship, you could say. And what would happen is that ancestors' bodies would be mummified and in some cases even kept in homes. Or, uh, for example, a leader could be mummified and they would carry that leader even into battle because they would say have so much respect for their past and their ancestry. This would be ancestor veneration. We see this in China. We can also see this in uh, the Incas as well. Iti would be, Inti, Inti, I'm sorry. Inti would be the sun god of the Inca or Quechua people. Um, their emperor or leader was believed to be a son of the sun god. So this is a symbol you would see that was in very importance with the Inca or Quechua people in the Andes. A waka is basically a large pyramid-like structure that was built to venerate someone in history, whether it's an emperor or a king or even people. Some of the wakas that they found in places like Peru look pretty much like hills <coughs> until they've excavated them. This is the Waka de Luna, which is located in northern Peru. And when you get in the inside, you start seeing things like this, which is pretty awesome. So these wakas are basically large pyramid type structures that you would find in uh, Peru, in um, uh, many of the Andes region, Ecuador as well. Quipu are a series of knotted strings in different colors. We know that the Inca or Quechua people in the Andes in South America used this. Uh, we know it was for numbers and that the knots in different places had different numerical values. Uh, there were Quechua people who would tie these strings in different ways and they had different significances. But one of the things we don't know is exactly what it means. Uh, there are some people who believe that besides number information and give further in that, it could even be like coding, possibly even like a written language if the letters mean, if where the knots are would mean different words or sounds. So we know they kept track of troops. We know they kept track of food using this system. But we don't know much more because when the Spanish will take over in our next era, they will burn much of these guipus. And also many of the people who are able to create these will be killed as well. So the art will really be lost. The art and the science behind this guipu will be lost. Waru waru, pretty cool word, is a form of agriculture or farming that was used by the Inca, Inca or Quechua people. Now, this is uh, like Chinapas, but actually the complete opposite. Um, Chinapas was land was brought into water. This is water brought into land. So what they would do is they would dig these trenches, they would fill them full of water, and what would happen is because water heats a lot more slowly and cools a lot more slowly than land, you put this water in here, it worked for irrigation, but it also kept the land from freezing or from the weather being too extreme with the crops. So by having all this water growing next to the crops in these canals, it actually increased food production for the Incas or Quechua people. What's funny is that um, uh, they stopped doing this uh, once the Spanish took over and they tried to do farming methods using fertilizer and artificial fertilizers and all these things that aren't as good for the environment. And then they compared that to using waru waru and they found out that this actually gets more production in farming and is much better for the soil and the environment over the long term. That's Waru, Waru. A tribute system. The Aztecs used a tribute system where people who they conquered would have to pay tribute to the emperor. This was uh, done in Persia, this was done in China. So uh, basically if you couldn't pay this tax, so you could be punished by slavery or property being taken away. However, this was a way for the Aztecs as they were conquering, it was a way for them to really collect taxes or tribute from other people who they conquered to make them richer and stronger. It's another reason along with this in human sacrifice, which is why the Spanish are able to get allies with many of the people who the Aztecs took over to fight with them as well. Mississippian are, quite frankly, the American Indians who live close to where the Mississippi River was. Uh, this would include Cahokia and the mound builders who live there, who you'll be reading about. And the Mississippian people had vast trade networks all over modern United States of America. In fact, many of these cultures had trade routes that extended to the southwest United States and even into Mexico, Mississippian cultures. Pachacuti is the leader or the Inca 
of the Quechua people. We call them Inca now mostly. But he was really the first leader of the Incas who um, uh, really established their empire by defeating the other people around him and establishing their huge empire that would stretch all over South America uh, into the Andes Mountains. Uh, without him, the Inca never would have, or Quechua, never would have built the empire that they were able to build throughout modern-day Peru, Ecuador, um, even into Bolivia. Pochteca, Pochteca were pretty much the merchants or traders, traveling merchants that existed in the Aztec civilization who would go from one place to another trading goods. And as we've talked in history, the more you trade, the richer you get. So they were responsible for a lot of the economic prosperity or advancements of the Aztec people. Matrilineal societies. So there were Amer many American Indian civilizations that were matrilineal. And what that meant was the family line didn't go by the father's name or by like the father's last name and continue. It did the opposite. It went by the mother's last name. So the mother's name was carried on in the future. And again, this is the opposite of a lot of the patriarchy that we've continued to see throughout world history at this time. Mita labor. In this time period, the Inca or Quechua people used Mita labor. Mita labor was a way for people to pay their taxes without paying money. Basically, everyone who lived in the Inca Empire would have to spend some time working for the empire. So you didn't pay taxes, you paid it in work. Whether that meant a lot of it was building roads, building structures, all people were required to pay their mita to the empire. Now it's going to happen later on when the Spanish come in, they're going to go, oh, you have this labor you use, you make other people do? And they're going to basically turn mita labor into forced slave labor where they make people go into mines to get silver and do other things to enrich the Spanish. But during the Inca time, mita labor was just a way of paying your taxes. Many people did it. The Chinese have a system similar to this called corvi, where they have people uh, build and uh, for their taxes instead of paying as well. When the Spanish come in, they change it to forced labor and slavery, uh, which is much more harsh.